Hello, everyone. It's good to have you tonight. Glad that you're here. Grab a hymnal, please, would you? And let's all stand. Turn to hymn number 323, 323, Standing on the Promises. Hymn number 323 on the first. Sing it with me. Here we go. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Good to have you tonight, hymn number 323. Sing it like you mean it. Come on, on the last, here we go. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. Good to have you tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome you also that are online. Hope and pray it's the blessing to you tonight. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. What a prayer. Our Father, it is a, a great to know that we can stand on your promises. And Lord, I pray that we will truly yield our lives to that and daily do so. Lord, bless us tonight. Be with us, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it is good to have you. Glad that you're here. Hymn number 485, hymn number 485. This world is not my home. Hymn number 485, I think you know it. We'll sing the first and the last. Here we go on the first. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Hymn number 485 now on the last. Here we go. Ready? Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. Amen. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Here we go. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, come on will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open shore, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Well, amen. Brother Jack, you come tonight. Wednesday night offering goes to help others, first of all, in our church, and then those outside of our church. If you give towards anything else, make sure you designate it, okay? All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Brother Jack, would you lead us? Amen. 
Amen. God bless you tonight as you go. All right. Hello, everyone. It's good to have you tonight. We're going to take some prayer requests. If uh, you have a prayer request you'd like to share publicly, then uh, we'd be ready to, to do that right quickly. And um, uh, let me first of all start off by saying that there's a pastor and his wife, and the uh, pastor's name is Brother Lindsay, and I believe it's Lifeline Baptist Church. And uh, he, um, he's involved with um, some of the uh, ministry there at the State House, working with Brother Barnes. And anyway, um, uh, there's been a sort of a visual called uh, for his wife, Mrs. Lindsay. And I'm not sure exactly all that she's dealing with. Uh, I, I, I am familiar that she does, or at least at one time had cancer, and so... I don't know if that's the situation. Susan? Okay. Ruthie Lindsay, and uh, it's a very serious situation, and uh, we just heard about this last night, and so, uh, so I would just ask that you put her on your prayer list, as well as for her husband and the ministry there, but, but especially for Ruthie Lindsay and her um, uh, pneumonia situation, it's very serious, Okay. All right, um, if you have a prayer request you'd like to share publicly, let's go ahead and do so at this time. Somebody? Ann? Good. All right. Pray for the Ward family. Uh, uh, they're having a situation with a concerning a particular family member that uh, they don't give her much long to live. And so just pray for the Ward family. God knows what's going on there. And thank God uh, Mary Doble is doing a little better. So amen for that. Somebody else, you have a prayer request? Marlene? Pray for Marlia's brother, Tim. He's been battling uh, cancer for a while, and 
And uh, so he does go to the doctor tomorrow and hopefully get a good report. Uh, so pray for Marley, his brother. Okay, Tim. Dave? Pray for Kim's cousin. Um, hopefully, be going home soon, right? And um, and so it's um, it's really um, uh, they'll they'll have someone around the clock with her, and and she does go home. And so just pray for God's will to be done there. Okay. Somebody else, Susan. They still haven't heard. All right, please, uh, they have not heard anything uh, uh, concerning Kara's biopsy, so please continue to pray for that situation. And then also little Noah uh, is sick, and so pray for him. Okay. Anybody else? By the way, it's good to see you tonight. All right, pray for Matthew and Jennifer and um, with uh, what, what they're going through and uh, uh, pray for God's will to be done there, okay? All right, Miss Barbara. Um, Melissa, your daughter-in-law, waiting uh, for their test results on a biopsy on an, on an ulcer situation. So pray, pray for God's will there. Somebody else? Okay, uh, church. Um, uh, obviously, I may, um, may I remind you about our, uh, our uh, country and uh, its president and the election this coming November. And uh, we just pray for peace. We pray for God's will to be done. And uh, also pray for, um, don't forget to pray for our first responders, our, our police and uh, paramedics, things like that. Thank God for our military. And uh, so pray for them. Pray also for your church. And uh, 
uh, at a time where the world is just totally out of control and so many things are happening. Church, if anything, may you and I be patient, may you and I be faithful, and uh, it's not the time to, to um, um, do things that um, will jeopardize the church and also your own walk with the Lord, so be careful, please, okay? All righty. Uh, rather there in your pew at an altar someplace, let's spend some time in prayer and, uh, and then we'll get right to the word of God tonight. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Lord, tonight I do pray for the Lindsay family and, and in particular uh, his wife and, and what she's going through. And I do pray for the family. You'll just have your will and way there, encourage them and comfort them. And Lord, we do pray that, uh, that, Lord, if it is your will, that you would raise her up and help her get through this. And, and uh, so, Lord, just may your will be done. We pray, Lord, for tonight and your word, and, and Lord, help us as a church to, to be faithful and, 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 Lord, to hear with ears that, Lord, encourages and, and uh, uh, Lord, uh, trust you and believe in what you say. And so, Lord, bless, bless us tonight as we gather around the word of God. Thank you for prayer. Thank you for, Lord, the time that we've had. Now, Lord, may your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.
folks be aware of Michelle Sims. She had a full body scan and, and another test and, and CAT scan tomorrow. And so uh, she's obviously hoping uh, for good results. And, and, um, and I, know, I know her faith and her trust is in the Lord no matter what happens, but we do pray that, that uh, for God's will to be done first and foremost, but we pray that, that uh, there is a turning point here of some good results. The last time she had something like this, it was not good uh, at all, and uh, so, so just pray for God's will to be done there, okay? All right. Philippians, please. Philippians in chapter number three. And <clears throat> I, um, I always have, um, well, as a pastor and as your pastor, I always concern for the church and, um, uh, the the constant uh, struggle that that any church goes through. Uh, you know, you want your church to to go in the right direction. You want your church to uh, keep fighting the good fight and not giving up. And it always concerns me uh, when our attendance is down, and always concerns me when you know um, uh, you know. First, for whatever reasons, people decide to not attend church. That concerns me. Or someone's, someone decides to go another direction, things like that. that. That concerns me. It concerns me when, um, you know, there's so much in this world where, you know, I, I heard, uh, I heard a, a, a particular individual, I don't know if he was a pastor or not, but he was talking about the church, and he said, he said that um, people don't come to church for fun. Well, obviously, I totally agree with that. That's not the direction a lot of churches have gone. I mean, one of their main, main platforms that they use quite often is, you know, come and let's have fun. And, uh, and, but I do believe that uh, you know, that without a doubt, there's so much in this world that people can choose to do. Uh, you know, if, if you and I as a church, if we, you know, if we try to have the best fun, if you and I try to have the best program, can I tell you, there are, there are things going on in the world that can outdo our programs any day. We cannot out entertain this world we cannot and I don't think any church should even if, even attempt to try to do that and, um, and, I, and you might say well preacher why are you telling us this well obviously this is one of the nucleuses of our church and I just want I just want you to know my heart I've been here a long time I, I and I and so most of you probably know my heart but but every now and then I just need to throw it out there again and let you know and because uh you know, uh, you know and, and the sad thing about it is, and, uh, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of times people will leave or they will look for something else because it is more exciting. And, and I want to tell you right now that, you know, you, the God that you serve is faithful and he whether or not he's exciting to you, that has nothing to do with him. God is the best God you'll ever find. I believe that wholeheartedly. And, uh, uh, and so, you know, I, I want you to, to get involved with him. I want you to, to find him and, 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 and experience all that he would have for you. Because, uh, you know, Anyway, I, I, uh, there's a lot of things on my heart tonight, and hopefully we'll get to the message here in just a moment. Philippians chapter 3 is where we're at. And <clears throat> <clears throat> 
tonight, what Paul does is politically incorrect. And uh, it's probably why maybe in a lot of churches it's not preached because it doesn't flow well with the times. But I believe what Paul says tonight to the Philippians is so applicable to you and I tonight. And uh, I believe it's something that is so vitally important. And so notice if you would with me, I believe we are, uh, I believe we're at uh, verse 17. Uh, let me just read verse 16 though. Nevertheless, welcome by the way, you that are online. Nevertheless, whereto we have already obtained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. The Bible says in verse 17, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. And no doubt Paul is, is, uh, is uh, encouraging these Philippians to be on the same page, to, to be on the same page when it comes to Christ be on the same page when it comes to pursuing Christ and having that whole heart attitude that he, that he refers to that we just talked about. Uh, you know, think the same thing. And, and I tell you how important it is that churches be one. That churches be same. And, and, and I will say, thank God we don't have a DEI uh, department here. Thank God, and for some of you that don't know what that means, well, you're not missing anything. But, uh, but this really flies in the face of diversity. It really does. You know, some people actually, their, their religious view is this. Well, you know, I like to try all kinds of religions. I like to look at what other people believe. Can I tell you, biblically speaking, especially from a local church, Paul, Paul is so against that. He says, no, let's, let's, be the, let's, let's be on the same page. Let's have the same mind. Let's walk the same way. None of this diversity stuff. When it comes to what we believe and, 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 and all that. And, of course, one of the problems is, you know, you, you learn other religions. Sadly enough, you may, you may find, hey, I kind of like that. Let's go that direction. And many have done that. But... Paul, and knowing what he has taught, knowing what the Lord stands for, he, and, and he says without any hesitation, he says, let us mind the same thing, let us walk by the same rule. And then he goes a little further and he says, hey, brethren, be followers together of me. Now, Paul was not trying to uh, pat his ego in any way whatsoever. But they knew Paul, folks. They knew what he meant when he said this. And they knew what Paul stood for. And so therefore, when, when he said that, they received it well. They received it from the standpoint that, and Paul, all he was doing was encouraging them to follow after Christ. By the way, if you remember the chapter that we're in, how he uh, over and over again said, I want to know Christ and, I, you know, and, and all these other things. He challenged them to press toward the mark. Well, that mark wasn't himself. That mark was Christ. And, and so, and so he, he challenges the church to be followers together of me. By the way, did you know that we as believers ought to be examples to one another? Well, listen to what the Bible says. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. And of course, pastors ought to be examples. Examples of what? Well, examples of the believer. By the way, that's what Paul told Timothy to do. In word, and, 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 he, and he has this whole, whole list. But, but, but as believers, you and I ought to be an example. An example that others could follow. An example that, and, and so please, you know, uh, and by the way, that's your responsibility. That's what God lays on you. And that's what God lays on me. 
that you and I ought to be examples. Sure, pastors ought to be examples, but uh, members and other Christians ought to be examples. Well, I'm not the pastor, so what are you trying to say? Do you get a, a pass? Do you get to do whatever you want to? And no, you, you don't. None of us do. You know, the same God that requires me to live a certain way is the same God that requires you. You ought to behave yourself at home. You ought to behave yourself on the job. You ought to behave yourself no matter where you go or what you do. Even when you're on vacation, you ought to behave yourself. You and I ought to be examples of the believer. And so Paul you know, encourages them to be that. He says, hey, brethren, you know, follow me. Now, obviously, he wasn't trying to say, all right, I'm the only one that believes it, right? Come on, follow me. No, no, no. In other words, he wanted them to follow him as he follows the Lord. And, and I tell you, you and I, you know, if someone were to follow you, it ought to lead them to Christ. If someone follows me, it ought to lead them to the truth of Christ. My friend, tonight, Paul challenges all of us to be good examples. For he says in verse number 18, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even what? Even weeping. That they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whoa, this is getting serious. But not only is it getting serious, but you talk about throwing things out and open so that people will know. He says, hey, be followers of me and mark those. In other words, without a doubt, you and I ought to, ought to, ought to be aware of those around us. We ought to know those who, who, who in the church walks right. By the way, you do know that's, that's, a, that's, that's a term. Someone said that in a church, there are two kinds of people, two kinds of members, two kinds of Christians, if I may say it like that. Those that want to Walk after Christ. In other words, like Paul described in this chapter, they are the ones that press toward the mark. They are the ones that, that strive to know him and to be like him. And then there are those who are so liberal. In other words, they're so worldly and they, they live as close to the world as they can. You and I ought to know who's who. You and I ought to mark those. Be aware of those. Because he, Paul brings up apparently a group of people, a kind of people, if I may put it like that, more than once. According to what the Bible says, he says, of whom I have told you, what? Often. I've warned you about this, this group of people. You know, is it right for, for uh, the minister to warn Christians of those that may mislead people? I believe without a doubt it is. And I believe without a doubt you and I ought to be aware. Wait a minute, those are not good people. They're going to lead us wrong. And so... Mark, uh, our, uh, Paul says to him, for, for, for many walk. I, I wish there wasn't many. But sadly enough, more than likely, that's what it is. There's many. There are many that walk like this. And I, and I wish that there was more uh, people that walking after Christ and, 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 and living the life that they ought to live. I wish that was the case, but not so. 
But this group of people that Paul is referring to is a very serious situation. So much that it has, you're talking about the life of a preacher, someone that, that is aware of the enemy, someone that deals with trying to help people to do what's right, and then you find that there's a group of people that does more damage for the cause of Christ. Paul says, I've warned you about these people often, and I have, I'm even, even now, he says, I am weeping. And no doubt, I, I would believe one of the reasons for the weeping is not only for their own own souls as far as the those that he he uh, uh, is telling them about you know the direction that they're going but also for the Philippians he's concerned for them and what if this group of people these these that he refers to as the enemies of the cross what if they infiltrate the church and begin to mess the church up and so what, what is Paul doing? He's weeping. He's weeping as he tells them this. Can I stop for a moment? When's the last time you and I wept concerning spiritual things? Please don't raise your hand. How many of you have loved ones that are away from God or are lost? Okay, when is the last time you wept for them? Now, no, I'm not saying that you have to be, in order to be spiritual, you have to weep. I'm not telling you that. But this is an emotion that comes from somewhere, right? I don't think it's, I don't think it's projected uh, as far as put on. I think, I think there's a legitimate concern here. And, I, and I'm telling you, my friend, without a doubt, you know, maybe if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I. And I don't know, maybe when we get to the point that, that without a doubt that, you know, it bothers us to some degree. You know, when things begin to bother us, we begin to do something about it. You do know that, don't you? We begin to clean our house when it bothers us that it's dirty. We begin to, to fix relationships when, when, you know, it's not working. It's not, you know, and, 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 and it begins to bother us when, when it's not, you know, you know, helping. And so we do something about it. Hey, we need to talk or something. In this case, Paul is weeping as he's writing, as he's telling these people about this group. And um, I'm just telling you, maybe we need to do more weeping. Not because it's, we're trying to be fake, but because of what God's doing on the inside of us. And so Paul says... And folks, it's not there by accident. You know, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God, we've, we have this humanistic, you know, act here of humanity. He's weeping. He says, For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Wow. Well, unfortunately, or, or fortunately, I don't, I'm not sure which, but he doesn't stop there in describing this, 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 these people. He says they are enemies of the cross of Christ. You know what the cross of Christ is, don't you? You know what took place at the cross of Christ? You know what it stands for? Well, these people are enemies to that. They are enemies to what Christ represents and what Christ did. 
I don't know, maybe it's, it's those that try to stamp out the message. Maybe it's those that say, no, I don't want to hear it. I don't know. But he says that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. But carefully listen now. He further describes this group. He says, whose end is destruction. Whether it's their own destruction... Because of what they do, it will end in destruction. Or, and I I would dare say that's probably the the what 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 he's referring to. But but no doubt, probably what they do, they destroy everything in their path as well. But the Bible goes on and says, whose God is their what? Their belly. In other words, referring to their desire. Whatever their desire is, that's what they serve and that's what they go after. Our God, by the way, is not our belly. It ought not to be. But here, here Paul describes this, this, this people their, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame. In other words, they glory in what they do, in their wrongdoing. And to us, it's, it's, uh, it's appalling, no doubt. And Paul says their glory, in other words, they, they revel in, they, they glory in what is shameful. Whose glory is their shame and who mine earthly things. Things that are temporary, things that are on this earth, things that uh, have no eternal value at all. Who mine earthly things. Oh, by the way, did you know if you were to look at this that you and I ought to be the opposite of this? You know, we are to mine heavenly things. We are to look upward, if you please. Not only that, but our God is not our belly. It is not our desires. We don't live based upon our feelings and things like that. Our God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's what he says. We want to please him. But not only that, He says, whose end is destruction. Folks, I tell you, that's not the way you and I ought to be. First of all, we know that we have a home in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. But not only that, you know, if if, if I were to apply it like this, the things that we do, it ought to be about for peace. It ought to be for that which would be helpful to the brethren and to one another. Not destruction. whose glory is their shame. Can I tell you, what is our glory? What is our glory? Isn't our glory to honor him? To do what he would have us to do? That would would bring such honor and glory. That would be our glory. That we might please him. By the way, remember the the apostles, remember those disciples of Christ. And they said that it was such an honor, it was such a glory to them to be beaten and persecuted for Christ. It was their honor to do that. I tell you, folks, that's that's the way the church ought to live. That's the way the church should be. Yet Paul describes to to the Philippians a a totally different group of people. And And then he focuses on them. And I tell you, I think this is so cool. And uh would to God that you and I as a, as a church and as a, as, as, a, as a child of God keep these things in mind. Because Paul describes this other group and who they are and who their God is. But then he says, but we, 
Well, no, notice what it says. For our, verse 20, for our conversation, in other words, our manner of life is in heaven. Amen. From whence we also look for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, this world is not my home. And it is true. I mean, heaven is our home. We have, we have a place there already. We, we, we have, uh, if I may put it like this, we have uh, reservations. We, we have our ticket punched, if you please. We, you know, our home is in heaven. And, and so therefore, you and I ought to be caught thinking of heavenly things. You and I ought to have mine heavenly things. That ought to be on our heart. That ought to be on our mind. Well, I tell you, when we come to the house of God, we ought to sing songs that uplift the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we ought to sing and think about heaven because that's, that's where our citizenship is. That's, that's where we belong. For our conversation is in heaven from whence we also look for a Savior. Can I tell you, one of the things that existed even back in Paul's day, and it still should exist today, listen to me. What's that, preacher? That we have a Savior that's coming again. We do. It is the imminent return of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I like to refer to it also as the rapture of the church. Don't know when it's going to happen, but we know it's going to happen. And it could happen at any moment, at any time. That is something that you and I ought to look forward to. That is something that I believe is for our motivation. It is for our encouragement. It is for our challenge. And Paul even says to the Philippians, and, I, and let me read it to you again, for he says it like this, from whence also we look for a Savior. Our head is up. We are aware that he could come at any moment. And, I, and by the way, knowing that, it kind of keeps us in line. Now, listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. You that are online, listen to what I'm telling you here. Some people actually look at this as a negative thing. I don't like serving a God that, that, that the only way, you know, he's up there and, and I've got to watch out because he could come at any moment and I've got to make sure my nose is clean. No. No, if anything, it's just the opposite. And that is this. I look for a Savior, and I know that he's coming back. I know that he's coming back, and I want to make sure that I am ready. I want to make sure that, that I've got things done because he's coming back. You see, <laughs> when I was growing up, my parents would tell me, hey, we're going to get home about 4 o'clock, whatever, 4.30, I don't know, whatever. And there's a certain things that you have to do. And I want them done by the time I get home. And you all know, you know when I did them, right? I did them at the very last moment I could. I waited until as long as, I, you know, sometimes I, I missed the mark. I waited too long. I couldn't get it all done in time. Or they came and they say, this is what they said. I, I can tell you really spent a lot of time. That was sarcasm, by the way. Because, no, they could tell. I just, hope, you know, half did it. Because I just waited until the very last. Do you know what? When I met my wife... And let's say, for example, she says, hey, I'm coming over. You know what? I didn't wait until the last minute to get things ready. 
No, no, I took a long time to make sure I had uh, things ready. I took a bath. I made sure that I smelled good. I made sure that we had the reservations done. I made sure, I mean, I made sure ahead of time. How come? Well, come on, it's my wife. I was trying to impress her. I loved her. You see, my friend, when it comes to our Savior, he's not like a big bully that's going to come and treat me ill. He's someone that I love. He's someone that I want to please. He's someone that I care about. And I was sure I cared about my parents, but they were my parents. My friend, believe it or not, Paul says to these Philippians, we look for a savior. Because this world's not our home. One of these days he's coming back. And that was meant to be an encouragement. That was meant to, to, to I, know, I know you're struggling. I know it's, it's hard in this world. I understand that. But just, just know this. Hey, our, our citizenship is in heaven. And one of these days he's coming. He's coming again. He's going to come and get us. But listen, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, just in case you don't know who the Savior is. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing in this world that can even come close to our Savior. Verse 21, who shall change our vile body. What? Yep. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body? Amen. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things and to himself. You know, it's amazing that, and I don't understand it, I really don't, but one of these Lord's going to come back. I don't know exactly how that's going to go. I do know what the Bible says about that, though. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, that's pretty quick, by the way, just in case you didn't know. But also understand that the Bible says that and we shall be changed. I, I, I don't know anything but this body. So I don't, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, compare it to anything. I used to have a body that didn't have any pain hardly at all. Today, not so much. And many of you can attest to your body. And this, this body, you know, we've gone through a lot. This body has, you know, you know as, as many we could say, it's kind of wearing out. I mean, some of you, you've already had some spare parts put on, right? Yeah. And, and those spare parts don't work too well right now. But they are what they are. But one of these days, we're going to, that's all going to change. And our body's going to be like his glorious body. Now, now, to what degree? I don't know. You know, some says, well, you, you know, walk through walls. Okay. I don't, I don't look to walk through anything. I don't care about that. I just want to see him. But we'll have a body that's like his body. Glorious body. And this will be changed. Hallelujah. 
what it's going to be changed to. The only thing I can know this, it's going to be good. It's going to be, it's going to be beyond my thinking. I don't know how it's going to be, except it's going to be like his. It's going to be like his. Well, whatever the case may be, can you just imagine Paul saying, so Philippians, let's walk the same way. Let's mind the same thing. Let's walk by the same rule. Let's continue to pursue Christ and let's keep our eyes on him. Hey, but hold on. But let me warn you. There are those that I've even warned you about often. Even weeping now, I tell you about them. Don't be like them. Because we, our home is in heaven. It is from heaven we look for our Savior. And guess what? He's going to change us. You know, right now we have to fight this old body, don't we? Sure we do. We have to fight our thinking. We have to fight our desires. We, have, we will always. It is, it is as long as we're in this body, we will always struggle. By the way, I think it's why it's, why it's good to come to church to, to fellowship and to, to be encouraged by the truth of God's word and, 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 and to go out and to, to be what Christ would have us to be. Boy, that gives us purpose. That gives us direction. It's important. But one of these days, this will all change. And all I can say is hallelujah for that. Thank God for that. But until then, let's be faithful. Let's be the church that God would have us to be. And I can just hear Paul saying to the Philippians, hang in there. Keep on striving. Keep pressing forward. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. This world's not our home. <laughs> We're just passing through. Don't forget that, church. Father, thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your word tonight. And Lord, help us to rise above the things of this world. Help us to keep our eyes on you. Heavenly, heavenward. Because it is from there that we look for a Savior. So Lord, may that always be our hope. May that be our encouragement. Thank you so much, Father, for saving us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.